members months ago, many observers said that central banks, including the ECB, were short of ammunition. And we have showed since March that we were ready to act, to react, to innovate in a very powerful manner. And the PEP program, this pandemic emergency purchase program, which you just mentioned, is a masterpiece of this quick and strong reaction. Uh, it's important through its amount and it's important through its flexibility because we have two aims at present. First is to counter the strong disinflationary effect of the COVID crisis and second, to prevent fragmentation within the Eurozone. So the PEP is flexible in its volume, in its timing, and yes, in its allocation through the borders, through jurisdiction, we must be very open, perhaps still more open on this flexibility. Governor, I want to ask you about interest rates because the chatter has increased in recent weeks and months that other central banks may have to take rates negative, whether it's the United States at some point or the Bank of England. If that were the case, what would the impact be on Europe, which already has negative rates? Because central bank policy is often a game of relative strategy and relative policy. Would it have a negative implication for Europe if the United States went negative on its official cash rate? Uh, I don't have to comment the monetary debate in our jurisdiction, starting with the US, and they are rather cautious on introducing negative rates. In our case, it works, and it has been working still more efficiently since we introduced tiering to mitigate the adverse effect for banks last September, and since we developed also the incent incentive uh, of what we call TLTRO free in March and April with a very substantive support for banks through our liquidity provision. So on our side, we are pleased with the way negative rates work. I don't see any reason to change the level at present. Governor, what's more important is understanding how much more support economies and financial systems will need from here, either from the ECB or from governments. Could you share with us, what's your assessment of whether we've now hit the bottom in terms of the growth decline for the French economy and for the EU more broadly as a result of COVID-19? Uh, if I look at the, at the economic situation, it was a very severe downturn in April in Europe as well as in the US. And we are now underway on a recovery, but which will be gradual, uh, which will be rather slow and which will be somewhat different in, in different countries. The main effect we have to deal with is its disinflationary effect. So it means that we must stick to our monetary mandate, to our aim objective of close, but below 2%. And we are quite far from that, at 0.3% at present. And our inflation target is, I stress it, it's symmetric, it's flexible, and it's midterm. Symmetric, it will not be a ceiling in the future, and we must be ready to exceed 2% at some moment. Uh, it's flexible, it's not straight away 2.0% at any time, and hence it's midterm. And we will have a debate in the strategic review of the ECB whether we should go as far as having temporary average inflation targeting to compensate over a period, say open with the COVID crisis, for instance, we have to compensate undershooting and overshootings of inflation. This is our main aim. The second one is to prevent fragmentation in this gradual recovery.